Hey guys, this is CTG once again, and we play. I will be playing as Artanis with my ally Abaddon playing as Vorzun, and it looks like the map will be lock and load. So this is not a live cast. I am actually commentating for, for my replay. We don't have enough minerals. Our plans to enter the void are in jeopardy. Amon intends to destroy Ulnar by overloading its celestial locks. Activating all five locks is your objective. Units from both of your armies must stand together near a lock to activate it. Alright, so I'm just getting my probes at the start. Get an assimilator while I'm waiting for my ally to make some pylons. As Artanis, I don't need any pylons, so what I will do is just put my buildings in my ally's power field because I am way too cheap for pylons. Why spend on the pylon when I can get two probes? So there's my second assimilator. Alright. I will almost have enough minerals for my next gateway. That'll cost more. There we go, two gateways, and put my probes in the second assimilator. Alright, warp gate is done, so I will get a cybernetics core, because I need these regardless, regardless of my strategy. If I go tempests, I need a stargate. If I go Robo, well, I need a robotics facility, and if I go Archons, I need a Twilight Council, all of which need a Cyberdex car to build. So, this is basically what I need every single game of Sartanis. Except maybe when they try to play as Carax, but that doesn't, that doesn't really work. Carax's cannons are just better than Artanis's cannons. Alright, so my rocks are almost down, so I got a probe over here. While I send my zealots to attack the gas rocks. There we go, next is down. I rally my nexus to the expansion rocks. While I queue up more probes. So I'll go for a robotics facility this game. Oh, that Zell is idle, so I move them around. Here comes the attack wave. They will not actually attack our base, but instead attempt to, to capture the central block. So I will help my ally break down his... The celestial lock is being claimed by Amon. If left uncontested, it will fall under his control and begin to destabilize all. Right. So, as my ally is, as my ally is fighting the enemy attack wave, I will clear my ally's rock so he can get his expansion up faster. Solar bombardment is ready, and as we can see in the first wave, that was Hellions. I saw Hellions in the first wave. Which is why this game, I will go for a robotics facility focused build. I will go for immortals and dragoons for anti air and observers for detection since Vorazoon's not that great with detection. There we go, immortals. Let me make an assimilator. Our allied base is under attack. Here comes my second robot. Oh, Raven. Terran is actually quite annoying. Terran is so annoying. Let's put some probes in that assimilator. Only the other one. There we go. Three on each. 
Alright. Let's get a Twilight Council and some gateways, or one gateway, I guess. The enemy is attempting to capture a celestial log. All right, let's capture one as well. And there's there's nothing here. It's probably that one raven. Your ally must be present to claim the objective. Yeah, it's probably that one raven that captured this. So I'll run my cell over here. And activate Solar Bombardment. That will actually clear out most of the enemies in the area. And it looks like my ally has was able to send some Dark Templar to help me capture the central lock. The Zelnaga construct has been corrupted by Amon's void energies. It would be an act of mercy to destroy it. There seems to be another attack wave. We have activated a celestial lock. It would be wise to defend it as we work to secure the others. There we go. Hellions and Warhounds versus Immortals. Yeah, that's not going to end well for Amon. Ravens are so annoying though. Ravens are so annoying. Amon's minions are contesting the law. They will soon gain control of it. Uh, let's get some dragoons. There we go. So that will be my composition for most of the game, Immortals and Dragoons. So we just get some upgrades and chrono them. Alright, so I signal my ally that I'm out to capture the western lock. Let's see if there's anything left. Not much. Not even that barracks. Well, yeah, I guess that barracks left was left. So let's make an observer and put it in surveillance mode. So surveillance mode actually sieges up the observer, wherein it's not able to move, but it has a greater sight range, like so. Another lock is now under our control. And I can also capture it. Well done. The objective is or the lock, ra rather, I can capture the lock while still using my all army button to move my stuff around. So I make some more immortals and head to the south, or yeah, the south lock to capture it. Battle cruiser, but I have some audio strikes. I guess it helps if you focus. But orbital strikes, not that good. Whenever you have a choice between, Amon's forces are moving to seize the celestial lock. Whenever you have a choice between shield overcharge and orbital strike, I normally want to go with shield overcharge. Three locks have been activated. If we secure the two that are left, we will have saved all. All right, so let's defend this wave. Amon's forces have taken control of the Celestial Lock. Your primary objective is to activate it. Alright, let's wait for it. Here they come. Let's see if my ally... Looks like he's going for Dark Temp... Dark Archons, rather. So he will try to mind control some of these units. Alright. Let's go for it. Sensors are detecting cloaked units. We will need detectors to track them down. Oh, he has a raven. Nice. Alright, let's use solar bombardment. There we go. And it looks like my ally also used black hole to trap some of the units in. That will help me get some kills. There are hybrid units though. That hybrid dominator, I think. The green one is dominator, the red one is behemoth. Alright, so let's warp some more units there. Let's capture this lock. Alright, pretty straightforward so far. Your 
citizens to claim the objective. Oops, let me send some stuff there. Sorry about that. But yeah, so far, the game's been going smoothly. That is the fourth lock under our control. Once we activate the final one, Amon will be defeated. So far, the map has been going smoothly, in part because Immortals are good versus Terran Mech. They have Hellbats and Siege Tanks, but I have Immortals, which do bonus damage versus Siege Tanks and have that shield thing, that barrier thing, that absorbs damage. So let's make some more Immortals here, and use the excess minerals for Zealots. There we go. Alright, Solar Bombardment, because I don't have Shield Overcharge. Maybe I should start referring to Orbital Strike as Shield Overcharge's less impressive little brother. Or maybe older brother. Doesn't matter. Oh, it looks like he grabbed the Battle Cruiser. Nice. He has two, actually. Very nice. Amon has lost his defile construct. Exemplary work, commanders. We have dealt a powerful blow to Alright, one left and split off that zealot. So as not to get splashed on. Last lock, let's go. And we start stepping in to maximize damage. Generally when units are crowding around Oh single Viking, yeah. When units are crowding around a choke point, that's not good since the units at the back aren't able to attack. That's why I'm doing Stutter Step to enable more units to go forward and attack, basically. Your allies presence is required that thing is actually being objective. annoying. Alright, let's make a few zealots, or yeah, a pair of zealots, and capture the last lock. Quite straightforward, GG. And this is a relatively short game, only 17 or 18 minutes. We have activated another lock. Press on, commanders. Admirably done. All five celestial locks have been activated. Amon will be unable to bypass them again. Well done, commanders. Olnar is saved. All right, Olnar is saved. Let's just have a look at the stat screen to see how well my strategy worked as compared to my allies. Yep, that worked very well.